Section 4 Artwork Penciler and inker Dave Gibbons and colorist John Higgins are credited with giving life to the various characters in Watchmen. They employed a variety of innovative techniques, a style that contained elements of the golden age of comics, and a deliberate attempt to inject cinematic realism uncommon in the comic books of the 1980s. Gibbons, who had worked with Moore on previous occasions, including a notable 1985 Superman story, Annual 11 for the Man Who Has Everything, avoided convention in his work and developed a storyboard style to the dialogue written by Moore. Nearly every panel includes significant details to the storyline or includes visual motifs such as triangles and pyramids with themes important to the plot. Gregory J. Golda describes the artwork as quote, both a tribute to the gold and silver age style of superhero comics. Unquote. He also writes that there quote, are symbols embedded in this work that require a book to fully discover. Gibbons used other cinematic techniques, such as having two main characters somewhat obscured by their surroundings and background characters, in order to avoid the usual extreme focus upon the primary characters prevalent in most comic book art. Moreover, Watchmen rarely uses motion lines to indicate motion, another technique often utilized in the comic book industry. In Watchmen, Motion lines are only used to indicate small actions and are not utilized in fight scenes. Instead, Gibbons uses posture and blood to highlight the motion and movement of the characters, which, quote, adds to the feel of realism and limits the authorial voice. Also missing are the written onomatopoetic sound effects that are traditional comic book storytelling technique. Gibbons also described his design of the characters as his own, derived from Moore's character notes. Moore credits Gibbons with coming up with many of the signature symbols in Watchmen, including the iconic smiley face, which was, quote, derived from behavioral psychology tests. They tried to find the simplest abstraction that would make a baby smile, unquote. Contrary to popular opinion, Gibbons contends that Rorschach's subtle body language and not his Rorschach test-inspired mask are the real indications of his mood. In addition, John Higgins' coloring technique was to rely upon primary colors, again indicative of the Golden Age style, rather than a wider color selection. Gibbons, who had no formal art training, notes among his inspirations Norman Rockwell, who was sometimes described as an illustrator with an idealized portraiture style, and Jack Kirby, amongst many others. The art, while deriving inspiration from various predecessors, including Will Eisner and Wally Wood, both artists Gibbons also names as major influences, is at once original in its execution and can be seen as a precursor to later realistic comic book artists such as Alex Ross. Section 5. Themes Realism is a primary mode in Watchmen, which features themes that relate superheroes to the human condition. Moore explores the fantastic world of costumed adventurers by raising various social issues that begin with the perception of authority. The novel's examination of trust and authority can be summed up in the phrase, Who Watches the Watchmen? In a Weberian sense, authority is seldom endorsed morally by those who do not have it, with institutionalized authority being unchallenged simply due to the intrinsic aspects of social power. The vigilantes and watchmen, before the Keen Act, represent superheroes as an institution, generally unquestioned until the issues of responsibility and culpability are raised. This questioning of authority mirrors the opposition to the Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Movement, both of which are discussed in Watchmen. These ideas are also apparent in what postmodernist Gregory J. Golda calls the quote, anti-veneration throughout the novel, illustrated by depicting superheroes as, quote, cranky and inept old-timers. Golda's anti-veneration, quote, treats destructive societal norms as the direct responsibility of the viewer by attacking the principles society holds most dear. This lack of respect for the past is the crux of the Watchmen, unquote. The subject of anti-veneration explores superheroes who are treated as veritable gods to be worshipped at one point, with Dr. Manhattan taking on the literal manifestation of a deity, and then are deconstructed in order to reveal flaws, which makes them less worthy of hero worship in the eyes of the public. Nonetheless, heroes can still be worthy within the valetism form of hero worship, as theorized by classical sociologist Thomas Carlyle and expressed in Watchmen. Carlyle, who is identified with early fascist philosophy, developed a concept of hero worship that was meant to overlook human flaws, as he contended that there was no need for moral perfection. Along these lines, Rorschach even belittles what he terms as moral lapses when discussing the comedian's past acts of violence. These Carlyle-inspired ideas, 
are depicted throughout Watchmen, as Ozymandias, during a discussion with Rorschach, refers to the comedian as, quote, a Nazi. To further exemplify this issue of superheroes as fascists, the extreme right-wing Republican New Frontiersman appears to be the most ardent supporter of mass vigilantism with one headline reading, quote, honor is like the hawk, sometimes it must go hooded. Apocalypticism and conspiracy theory are elements of both plot and mood in the series. The threat of nuclear annihilation is ever-present throughout the novel. According to an interpretation by director Darren Arnovsky, the whole motivation for Ozymandias is the impending doom of the world. The plot is based around a conspiracy. Rorschach is obsessed with conspiracy theories and appears to derive much of his thinking from the new frontiersman. Arnovsky argues that Watchmen's treatment of the subject was pioneering, but has since, quote, become so pop because of JFK and the X-Files, it's entered pop culture's consciousness, and Rorschach's vision is not that wacky anymore, unquote. Conspiracy theories invoke a lack of control on the part of characters like Rorschach and lead to the examination of other themes in Watchmen, such as determinism. Gregory J. Golda describes the relationship between the philosophy of determinism and Dr. Manhattan, who, quote, lives his now immortal life with a perception of time and events as unchangeable. He becomes the symbol of determinism, and that, quote, he lives his own life under this illusion of determinism, failing to see that there was a superior intellect that could outsmart even an all-knowing being, unquote. This ties into notions of free will as discussed by Thomas Hobbes, a prominent philosopher of determinism and human nature. Hobbesian views tend to support the notion that there was no absolute free will as Hobbes, quote, was a determinist in the sense that he espoused that although one's actions are free, one's will is not, unquote. It is often Dr. Manhattan who discusses issues of determinism and free will when he explains to Silk Spectre, we are all puppets, Laurie. I'm just a puppet who can see the strings. Watchmen also explores issues dealing with memory by utilizing flashbacks, which define the characters and how they are remembered by their peers. For example, the past actions of the comedian are all selectively recalled by Dr. Manhattan, Ozymandias, and Night Owl too, as each recalls some significant event that defined who the comedian was to them and how he influenced them. Further flashbacks by Dr. Manhattan and the first and second Silk Spectres also relate to the power of memories as they serve to provide epiphanies or an idealized, quote, past, even with the grimy parts of it, well, it just keeps on getting brighter all the time, as the, unquote, as the retired Silk Spectre explains to her daughter. It is Rorschach, though, who constructs the most idyllic past with a father he never knew and a strong reverence for President Truman. Megalomania is also addressed in Watchmen, but not with conventional villains. Instead, Ozymandias is presented as an idealist who looks to the past for inspiration so that he may better utilize his prodigious intellect to help mankind, at first idolizing Alexander the Great. He later relates himself to Ramses II and adopts the Greek name Ozymandias and the Golden Age of the Pharaohs. This has parallels with the Golden Age superhero Hawkman, who believed himself to be the reincarnation of an Egyptian prince as well. Ozymandias exhibits various aspects of narcissistic personality disorder, including behavioral grandiosity and a lack of empathy. Many of the themes in Watchmen are explored in Moore's other works, including V for Vendetta, which also dealt with issues relating to fascism and hero worship. In addition, the Nietzschean Ubermensch, literally Overman or Superman, archetype is personified throughout much of Moore's work, including Ozymandias and Watchmen and other characters Moore has created, including Miracle Man and Tom Strong. Section 6. Significance. Reception and Criticism. Time magazine placed Watchmen on its list of the 100 greatest novels from 1923 to the present, stating that it was, quote, told with ruthless psychological realism in fugal overlapping plot lines and gorgeous cinematic panels rich with repeating motifs, a heart-pounding, heartbreaking read, and a watershed in the evolution of a young medium, unquote. Watchmen was the only graphic novel to be listed. Watchmen has also received several awards spanning different categories and genres, including Kirby Awards for the Best Finite Series, Best New Series, Best Writer, and Best Writer-slash-Artist, Eisner Awards for the Best Finite Series, Best Graphic Album, Best Writer, and Best Writer-slash-Artist, and a Hugo Award for Special Achievement. Watchmen received praise from those working within the comic book industry, as well as external reviewers, for its avant-garde portrayal of the traditional superhero. Watchmen became known as a novel which allowed the comic book to be recognized as great art, rather than a low-brow or unsophisticated genre. Don Markstein of Toonopedia wrote that 
what the Maltese Falcon did for detective stories and Shane did for westerns, Watchmen did for superheroes. It transcended its origins in what was previously considered a lowbrow form of fiction. Watchmen's status as a seminal book in the comic book field was recently boosted when acclaimed comic book author Stan Lee called it his, quote, all-time favorite comic book outside of Marvel. Unquote. A review by Revolution SF goes on to say that Watchmen is one of the most important stories in comic book history. There has also been some criticism of Watchmen. In terms of the artwork, the colors have been characterized as flat and too contrasting by one reviewer. There has been some questioning of the complexity of Watchmen, as well as Gibbon's involvement in it, saying that he, quote, always felt a bit like the fill-in guy, unquote. The same source criticizes the long-term influence of the work, and Alan more generally, and asks, quote, did the comic book have to grow up? References in other works. Watchmen was parodied by the Simpsons comic book series Radioactive Man in issue number 679, Who Washes the Washman's Infinite Secrets of Legendary Crossover Night Wars, September 1994. Night Owl and his ship make a cameo appearance in the third issue of Marvels by Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross. Under the Hood, the book written by the original Night Owl, Hollis Mason, is seen in a shop window and Rorschach is visible in the background of the superhero bar in Kingdom Come, also illustrated by Alex Ross. In issue 17 of the late 80s DC series The Question by Dennis O'Neill and Dennis Cowan, The Question reads a Watchmen trade paperback and then contemplates Rorschach's crime-fighting ideas and their relationship to his own, finally concluding that Rorschach sucks after attempting to employ his methods. This was an intentional irony, as Rorschach's character is partly based on the original Charlton Comics' version of The Question. In 2004, the movie The Incredibles was released, with reviewers commenting upon themes expressed in the film, which seemed to pay homage to Watchmen. The now-defunct Canadian rock band The Watchmen took their name from the comic series. Joey Serlin, their guitarist, is an avowed comics fan.